is Shandi, and I am uh, the choir coordinator here at Teen Challenge Rhode Island, and I'm also a graduate of the program. I graduated in, I came in the program in uh, March of 1998, and I graduated in October of 2000. So it's a, a little over 20, 20 years right now. How, are you all familiar with Teen Challenge? A long-term residential faith-based recovery program for men and for women who struggle with life controlling problems, such as but not limited to drugs and alcohol. Uh, we have had um, women come in the program that didn't have addiction issues, but maybe had anger issues, or um, there were things in their life that were causing it to be dysfunctional. They were in some form of bondage. Teen Challenge is not just a drug program. Teen Challenge is a discipleship ministry. Um, the women that come through the program, um, they have an opportunity to get a hold of, to get a hold of God and, um, and step foot on the path that he has for their life. Um, so as I said, I am a graduate. I spent um, 12 years in bondage to uh, drugs and alcohol. Uh, crack cocaine destroyed my life um, and everyone around me. I had two children and my children were taken away from me. There wasn't one part of my life that went untouched by addiction. Um, addiction is a very selfish thing. Um, the focus was, you know, um, how to get that next high. And I was raised in church, I actually accepted the Lord at an early age, and I learned about God, I went to Christian school, and when my family um, split up, when my parents split, because my father was an addict, um, a closet addict, so to speak, um, but the dysfunction became very dysfunctional. And um, at that point, I just decided to do what I wanted to do. And when I picked up drugs, I ran for the next 12 years. So um, I'm very grateful for the foundation that the Lord laid in my life as a young child because those seeds that were planted never left me. And even in my addiction, in the depth of my addiction, God's voice was still very relevant to me and very loud, um, though I often didn't want to hear it because I wasn't ready. And I knew that um, when it was all or nothing. So he was, the louder he spoke toward the end of my addiction, the more I ran from him. And I'm very grateful that he never let go of my life. And March 11th, when I came into the Doors of Teen Challenge, I came right from Detox on Broad Street and they dropped me right off. <laughs> and I didn't even know that that's what the program was there. And that was the neighborhood where I used to get high um, you know, all of those years. So God was divinely orchestrating everything behind the scenes and he knew it was right where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. I had been given the book, um, Please Make Me Cry by Cookie Rodriguez, who was the first woman who ever came through Teen Challenge in New York. And uh, my family, when I was 14 years old, had tried to get me, uh, you know, had started, to, God started planting seeds to them at that young age. And I just, I didn't want to hear it. So God confirmed these things to me when I came back to him, all the, the times he, he reached out for me. And, uh, but I'm very grateful for a program like this. Today's day and age, there are 196 deaths a day, mm. okay, from overdose. Any one of these ladies could have been one, number 197. Mm. You may know someone who struggles with addiction. You may have lost loved ones or know someone who has lost a loved one to addiction. I thank God today that there that there is hope, that there is hope. And this, these, uh, the women that come into the program, as I said, they have an opportunity. You know, what makes Teen Challenge different? We say it's the Jesus factor, and that is true. They have an opportunity to get to know God through the curriculum, through the structure of the program, through our chapels. But it's not mandatory. That's a personal choice. Anybody can come in and do a program. Anybody can come in and follow the rules, but if there isn't a heart change that takes place, then that person doesn't leave any better. Yeah. So our prayer for the women when they come in this program is that they get a hold of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that they develop a personal relationship with him, because without that relationship with him, again, we don't leave a whole lot changed. And there are a lot of programs out there um, that are doing good, but without Christ, that is the key. And that is the key to our lives. Because until he comes back, right. we have an opportunity to connect with him. Amen. You know, and ultimately, you know, our God desires to see as many saved. Mm -hmm. 
So teen challenge is a long term, as I said, there's no quick fix. It's 12 to 15 months and in that time, there are five phases in the program. Um, the women who are coming in, some of them have known Christ. Some of them have had careers. Some of them have served in church. You know, there, you know, addiction is no respecter of persons. It is no respecter of race. It is no respecter of age. The ladies you see stand before you here today come from all walks of life, all backgrounds. And when they come into the program are offered the same opportunity. We have a, a standard of curriculum. We have 14 group studies which deal with the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Love and accepting myself, anger and personal rights, how do I know I'm a Christian, how to study the Bible. All of these things are fundamentals that um, the ladies have an opportunity to learn. And it's, it's, it scratches the surface. These are um, fundamentals that can be built on. I know for me, the things that God did in my life coming through the program laid a foundation that he is still building on today. Mm -hmm. And the scripture that I stood on all through the program and throughout my life was Philippians 1.6. And that is that he who began a good work in me mm -hmm. is going to bring it to completion until the day of Christ. I can be Amen. confident of this, that he who, he who began it is going to mm -hmm. continue that work. Yes. And it, it can be easy to get discouraged in the process. You know, a lot of women who come in the program that have children, we're separated from families. We are, we are at a place now where we have no drugs to cover up our feelings. We have nothing to um, we have nothing to use <laughs> just to um, we have nothing to um, what is the word I'm looking for? We're 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 laid bare before God at this time, you know, and um, and it's a rebuilding process. So it can be broke. It can be painful at times. But the beauty that comes out of a life surrendered to God is one of purpose and worth. When we begin to connect with the God who created us Amen. and knows who we are and develop a relationship with him personally, he begins to put the pieces of our broken life back together. Yes. Families be re being reunited. Marriages being restored. A life that we never know we could have had. Again, I didn't have a career, so God had a blank slate when I came in the program. And had I not stayed and endured and was not committed to the process, I would have missed out on a lot that the Lord had for me. I met and married my husband here. We have children together. God restored the relationships with my older children who were little when I came in. That's exactly what he's doing throughout Teen Challenge worldwide right. and in New England. So Teen Challenge also offers life coaching. When the ladies get to the end of their program, um, there's that need as they begin to pray about what the next step for their life is. Um, in the fifth phase of the program, they're allowed that opportunity to have life coaching. Building life skills is not something that everybody has. Mm -hmm. Speaking for myself, 12 years of addiction from the age of 12 to 24, there was no skills developed in that time. And the ones that were, were not for the purpose of God. How to hold a job, how to balance a checkbook. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. to develop a, um, to have a network of people. When you go from living in community for 15 months to getting ready to maybe step out to what God has for you next. So there are steps we want um, to give the best opportunity for those who come through to be prepared. So God has opened the door for us and you may have heard about it the last time we were here but we do have a transitional home and that is for those who complete the program and are looking for a stepping stone prior to going back out to whatever it is. And what the transitional home does is it offers accountability with stability for that next step. So we offer an internship, um, an apprenticeship. Some of the ladies who stay on um, can live at that home. And again, it's a bridge between when you go from such structure into the next thing, you know, um, for, those who, for those who want it, we have that as an opportunity also. God has also opened the door for us to open a women and children's facility. And as a mother who had been separated from my children due to my own addiction, coming into the program, it was one of the biggest prayers that I had was, God, please help restore the years that I've had uh, away from my children, the dysfunction that they had to live through in my addiction. So um, we are praying about it. We have been zoned to build on our existing property, but we have also um, been given the finances needed to purchase a facility. So we're in the process now of looking to raise funds for the first year of operational costs. So that way we have we can have the women come in and not have to worry about the finances at that time. 
We want to have a home for five women and ten children mm -hmm. so that they also will be able to not only be restored with their relationship with God, but as a family unit. Because how many of you know that the family is affected? It is not just our addiction that affects us, but it affects those around us as well as our children. We have a few things going on at the ministry. How many of you have Facebook? If you don't, if you do, um, take a look at our page, Teen Challenge Rhode Island. Like our Facebook page. There are constant testimonies of those who have, are in the program and how God is transforming them. You'll feel like you know us personally <laughs> because Deb is a firm believer in allowing you know, to be seen what God is doing in the lives of these women. It also is a way for you to stay uh, connected to know what we have going on. We have a 5K. Um, this is our fourth year. Our director, Deb, lost her son to an accidental overdose five years ago. And this, um, this walk, uh, this 5K, has started in memory of him. If you know someone who's struggling or has lost a loved one, if you'd like to join us in that fight against addiction, um, whether you want to walk for yourself or just sponsor someone to walk in it. Um, all of that goes into the um, running of this home. We also have a new app called The Sober Peer. This is a digital platform that offers um, counseling and mentoring for those. It's an app that you download. If you would like more information about that, Caroline, raise your hand. She can give you more information about that. In the back, accountability um, while you're waiting is one of the groups that we have. Um, so if you have a family member who's struggling in addiction and want to know what do I do, connect with us. We can help give you some support. We want you to stay connected with us. We also, if you didn't see it in the back, we have a product table. And on that product table, we have jewelry that the ladies hand make. It's part of their work experience program here. They hand make that jewelry. We also have book seven <coughs> of They Overcame. And that is 10 testimonies of those who have come through Teen Challenge and their lives have been touched by the power of God. And you will be able to read about that. Pastor, we have one, a gift for you and your wife also back there. And um, one of the newer things that we have is our um, cutting boards. And these are handmade by the men in our Massachusetts Center. We have a carpenter shop there. And we, again, it is a skill and a trade that they're learning as well as a way for us to continue to bring funds in the home to keep our doors open. We are not state funded, we are not um, funded by the government, so we depend on churches like yourself and those who um, want to sow seed into good ground. And as you hear, what you're going to hear, testimonies from these ladies who have come in and how God is using this program to touch their lives, I pray that you are blessed, but if you would stop back there uh, we'd love to go home with no cutting boards today. If you're looking for a Mother's Day gift or even as a witnessing tool to someone else, please stop and see us at the back table. I'm going to turn it over to our choir now, and I pray that your hearts are opened, um, and I pray that for those who are watching um, that you're going to hear something today, that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, that will, uh, that will speak to your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Melanie. Good morning, church. My name is Melanie. I am 40 years old. I've been at Teen Challenge for almost five months now. God rescued me. God rescued me from an opiate, fentanyl, and non-prescriptive drug addiction, and he's continuing to restore me with boundaries and coping skills at the program. The verse I stand on today is Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on, on your own understanding. Thank you, God bless. My name is Kelsey. I'm 30 years old and I have been at Teen Challenge for 25 days. God brought me here to help me with my anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. And the verse I stand on is Psalm 27.1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Yeah. Amen. Good 
Good morning. My name is Susie. I'm 19 years old. I've been at Teen Challenge for five months. The Lord rescued me from childhood abuse, trauma, and neglect, the foster care system, sex trafficking, and an attempt of suicide. Today, God is freeing me from the spirit of fear, and he's teaching me how to love everyone around me. The verse that I stand on is Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Yes. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Amen. Hello, my name is Pat. I entered Teen Challenge as an old, worn out, 64 year old. Today, 10 months later, I am a new, renewed 65 year old. Yeah. I entered Teen Challenge with many years of abuse, beginning at age six, where I was thrown into an adult world, and throughout my entire life, I had not matured mentally because I had lost the, the things of my childhood. At 13, I began doing the drugs of the 70s. So by 17, I had developed a 48-year uh, uh, years of eating disorder. At any time during those 48 years, I was either anorexic or bulimic. All of this and abuse throughout the years into my adult life I covered it up with all types of it, drugs, alcohol, other activities, sports, work, anything to cover the pain that I had been carrying. So when I entered Teen Challenge not too long after my husband passed away, uh, it was within those first 30 days that Teen Challenge, through God, uh, made breakthroughs that years of therapy, counseling, institutions, hospitals, couldn't even come close to. And since then, I'm continuously having breakthroughs, uh, learning how to love the way God intended love, learning how to trust, learning how to give up the spirit of control, mm -hmm. mostly the breakthrough of the bondage of fear that was instilled in me as a child, which is why I stand on the scripture. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, yes but a power of love in a sound mind. Amen. 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 If you'd like to join us, we are going to sing Old Church Choir. Oh. 
Singing in my soul, I got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing, cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing? My name is Hope. I'm 45 years old. I've been at Teen Challenge for three and a half months now. Um, domestic violence where I met, was mentally and physically abused. He, he uh, saved me from, from grief of losing my dad and he saved me from a meth and a heroin addiction. God is teaching me how to use my voice today. I'm also learning how to receive love. And the Bible verse I stand on is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, my name is Caroline. I am 42 years old and I've been at Teen Challenge for eight months this week. God is so good. Before coming to Teen Challenge, before walking through those doors of Teen Challenge, I was wrapped and held in bondage from childhood abuse, neglect, and abandonment, which left deep holes in my heart. Um, the hole has just left me seeking attention, relationships, and eventually led to an almost death with drugs, alcohol, and I was heavily medicated on psychiatric meds. Um, I found myself in and out of hospitals, detoxes, psychiatric wards, and diagnosed everything from PTSD, bipolar, to schizophrenia. And I was okay with that because the doctors could give me a pill and I could be just on my way. Um, but even that, that couldn't, I couldn't fill it. Um, I'd go in rehabs, I'd get clean for a little bit, um, and I'd want to get my life back together real quick. Just get my life back together. Just fix me so I can get my life back together. I eventually did become pregnant and have give birth to a beautiful boy, Jackson. But even that couldn't keep me sober. That couldn't keep me. Giving life to somebody could not keep me from destroying myself and anyone that came in my path. Um, I found myself at the end of my addiction sleeping in very churches like this on mats during hypothermia and uh, eventually suicidal once again. I was handing my life over to the enemy every day. My life and my mind, my heart, everything, I just gave it to him on a daily basis. And he was over me just saying, just end your life today. You don't, your son doesn't need you. You don't need to go on anymore. You will never be different. But God, God stepped in in that moment and was like, get up, my princess. I have a plan for you. Everything the enemy has been trying to use for evil, I'm going to make it for good. He literally picked me up, carried me on his shoulders to the doors of Teen Challenge. This brought me full circle. I came here in October. I had just gotten here like two months and I was in a fog. I remember walking, just being in the house at Teen Challenge, like just having to walk up and down the stairs like was difficult. I was mentally and physically broken down. I would have, in between chores, I would have to sit on the stairs because I just couldn't physically do it. I had to learn how to like get up out of bed because for so long I didn't get out of bed. I had to learn how to like wash my clothes, brush my teeth, those basic things I took for granted that way back in the day I knew how to do, but the life skills that Shawnee was talking about, I lost. I don't know if they were ever really ingrained in me. And so I found myself just like, just, just do the next thing. Just do the next thing, Caroline. Like, everything else will follow. God just had his hand on me the whole time, just through my leaders. He appoints people in your life. He picks them. He handpicked all of us to be here today. He knew the day. So... Day by day, I would get up. I would do what they said to do. I would let the, let them just pour me in with love. I didn't know how to receive it, but he, he started showing me how to receive it. 
Um, I, did event, I did lose custody of my son when he was 18 months old, and God started giving me pieces of that back through FaceTime phone calls. That put life into me. That started putting, I'm like, oh, you're going to give me another chance again. He's so good like that, though. He just wants us to return to him. Amen. I never developed a relationship with God. I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't know that like I could just talk to him. So I'm learning how to do that. And he's starting to do a deeper work in me now. He's starting to speak to me in ways like I didn't think was even possible. You know, this morning when you were talking about, you know, get up, just pray. You know, I got up, I was reading a book, I started praying, and he's like, he was just said, you know, pride. Pride was what I heard, and it covers the true nature of the heart. So he's going to start doing something there. So that's what he's doing. So today I just follow him. I just, you know, just be obedient to him. I'm not in a rush to get back to my life. He said leave it all behind. I wasn't leaving a whole lot behind because I gave it up a long time ago. So today I'm just going to be obedient to my God, to Jesus, do what he wants me to do, serve him, because it's really not about this life anymore. It's about the eternal life that he has for me. A, a seat at his table, which I... I can't wait to meet him one day, like really. So the verse I stand on is Proverbs 31, 25. She's clothed with strength and dignity. She laughs without fear of the future because my future is in his hands. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Good morning. I'm Melissa. I'm 29 years old. I grew up in church. I went to a Christian school. My parents served in ministry, and I served faithfully right alongside of them. But growing up, there was always something missing inside of me. I had horrible self-esteem, and for some reason, I just had this idea in my head that no matter what I did, it wasn't good enough. So when I was about 18, I ended up leaving church, leaving home, leaving my family, and I kind of searched the world looking for things that would fill the void inside me. I tried alcohol, I tried drugs, I tried two different careers, I went to college, and I seemed like I was somewhat successful, but inside I was so empty. In December of 2019, I went to check on my brother and I found him dead. He had overdosed on fentanyl. And at that point, I really started to completely spiral out of control. <laughs> I lost all function that I somewhat had in my life, and I ended up in the hospital twice. And the second time that I ended up in the hospital, I remember laying there just feeling completely alone. And I cried out to God and I said, whatever you want me to do, I'll do, but just save me. I can't do this anymore. And two days later, almost six months ago, I came to Teen Challenge. Amen. Amen. And since then, I mean, I first came in the door and I was like, ah, I got this. I grew up in a Christian school. I know what I'm doing. And I tried to do the program in my own strength for about the first three months. I followed all the rules, I said all the right things, but there was something missing and my heart wasn't really there. At that point, three months ago, uh, Teen Challenge said we were going back to the church that I grew up in. And I said, I'm not doing that. I am not getting up and saying that I was a drug addict or that I messed up my life so much I'm here. But I ended up going and I still said I'm not testifying. But I remember sitting in the pews and God was speaking to me so clearly. And he said to me, you told me you would do whatever I asked you if I saved you. Well, I saved you. You're okay. And now this is what I'm asking you to do. So I got up and I shared my testimony. And that was really when my heart started to soften and my heart started to change. And now the verse that I stand on is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For it is by grace through faith that you have been saved. This is not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works so no one can boast. Yeah. And I really learned at that point that all the glory is God's, that it's about my heart. It's not about what I say. It's not, it's not about what I know or what I do. It's about him. He saved me. And now I'm not exactly sure what my future holds, but I know that I will serve God for the rest of my days. Yes. And I'm kind of in the process of seeing where that's going to land me, but I'm just trusting him all the way. Amen. Um, my name is Lindon. I've been at Teen Challenge for seven months now, and God has rescued me from an opiate and fentanyl addiction. Um, he's just today through the program, he's restoring my marriage, he's restoring my faith, he's just giving me my voice back. I'm now someone that I can be proud of, and um, I live in the light. I'm no longer living a double life, and I can be proud of who I am, who he has called me to be today as I stand before you. I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting. 
sing. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Psalms 3, 3, O Lord my God, you are a shield all around me. My glory, you hold my head high. Hi guys, my name is Shannon. I'm 18 years old and I've been in Teen Challenge for a little bit over two months. And this is the verse that I've been trying to live off of. Um, growing up in and out of foster homes, I became very hard. I felt that it was my job to protect myself. But after falling down the path of addiction, I couldn't protect myself anymore and I knew that I needed God to rescue me. Well, being at Teen Challenge, he has been saving me from my fears, my anxieties, my depression, the foster care system, suicidal ideation, and my rebellious spirit. He's also helping me restore my relationship with my adoptive family. With God, I am seeing that all things really are possible. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Amen. been walking the same old road for miles and miles if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better to sing 
and um, all at the place that they're at. They're all at a different place today, but I'm so proud of them. Susie pushing through, Shannon using her gifts, Lindana just growing and maturing, Pat, amen, Kelsey, <laughs> our newbie. <laughs> yes, Melanie, God just doing stuff. Caroline, the progress, hope, hope. Oh, oh, hey. hope. She just loves to praise the Lord. Lisa, getting there. Melissa, growing so much. So, the ladies, you see, God is using, God is doing things in them, you know, and it, it can come at a different time for each one of them while they're here. You know, we don't have. You know, it's not everyone who comes in the door and I'm just, you know, I'm ready. Some people get court ordered. Some people, their families drop them off and their motives may not have been to, but God can still work with that. Yes. And they have an opportunity while they're here, um, you know, for God to do things in their life. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you about today is our, uh, our resident. We have a dollar day sponsorship for our residents. If you're able to, if you'd like to sow a seed into good ground, you're hearing uh, the fruit of what God is doing here in this ministry. Um, I myself um, never paid. To, so I had people support me throughout, and not every, not everyone that comes in has family that is willing to. You know, a lot of our bridges have been burned. I know my mom's like, listen, just get yourself together, call us mm -hmm. later. You know what I mean? They didn't want to hear me say, I'm trying. I'm in another program. I'm going to do it this time. Yeah, we'll see. So the time and consistency it took, and they were able to see. God do things which was a witness to them, you know, and that was for God's glory. So if that's something you're interested in, um, we do a dollar a day. You could do um, an annual gift of 360, but I can give you more information in the back um, for that. But Pastor, thank you so much for allowing us. And I pray that the story goes online. I, I hope that there's something that will resonate with you that you can take and share with somebody else. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are fortunate, blessed that God has brought them here. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Lord. Brother Sweepers, would you like to offer a word of prayer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sing the song, the song last Sunday. Yes, Lord. Being that all of these testimonies and how God is moving in the lives of our sister, our mother, our brother, our aunts. Uh, page 344. Just for you to know that he got the whole world in his hand. Yes. Amen. And you can see from your testimony, all doubt. That he does have the whole world. Because he never forgot them by each and every one of us. Yes. No matter where we find ourselves, whether in the dungeon or whether by the roadside, yes, you always come on and say, Get up. Yes. So he has the whole world in his hands. Yes. So we can stand, do it like a stand, and let's sing. I uh, have some of most of them. Both of my sister came up to the church, so I know they know about this song. <laughs> he got a whole world in his hands. He got the whole world. Oh, world. 
the whole world in his hand. Yes, yes, Lord. And we just thank God today yes, for the sisters that he has brought Hallelujah. here, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just thank God for the, the courage that it can come. Yes, Lord. We thank God that they know that no matter what, he promised never to leave them. Yes, Lord. So they are collected together and they said, Lord, I surrender all to you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for their surrender, Heavenly Father. There are so many of us who think we can do things on our own. Oh, like the sister said, when she got there for the first three months, she thought she could do everything on her own. Yes, Lord. Oh, but it was so cool that Lord would tell you though, that you cannot do all on your own. He said, call on me. Early in the morning, the telephone line is never busy. Oh, yes, you can call on him in the afternoon. You can even email him. His telephone line, an email is never busy. He is not too far that he cannot hear you. Yes, and he is not too short that he cannot trust you. Yes, Lord. But we just said thank you, Lord. Yes, please. Thank you for them. Thank you for the leader. Thank you for the way you continue to move into their lives. Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. because they have seen you. They have known you. Now, so many times, Lord, that we backslide, but then you are there to bring us thank back. You, so we just thank you for them, Lord. Yes, Lord. We present this church to you this morning. Yes, Lord. We say, Lord, it's not a mistake. Thank you, Lord. It's not a coincidence that today, when they were born, you said today they were been in Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Yes, Lord. They were been here giving these words of encouragement. Lord. They have been here to sing the song yes, praising you, Lord. Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Be with those that are sick this morning. Yes, Lord. Oh, your doctor among all doctors. Yes, Lord. Your doctor that never lost a patient. Yes, Lord. Oh, those that are sad, Lord. Oh, you gave us a spirit of joy and not a spirit of sadness. Yes, Lord. Oh, those that those that are praying, Heavenly Father. You now gave us a of fright, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, when you say, come on to me, all ye that labor, mm -hmm. and I ever the later, yes, and I will Lord. give you rest. Hallelujah. We present our country into your care. Yes, Lord. Oh, we say, be with the head of, of the president and those that are in authority. Mm -hmm. Guide them, Lord. Be with this pandemic, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes, I know, Heavenly Father, you are in control. Yes, Jesus. No matter what, Heavenly Father, yes. we will make it through. Because you say you will never leave or forsake us. Yes, yes, Lord. Oh, we present uh, Dr. Sylvester, his family to you. Yes, Lord. Oh, be with little Solomon, Lord. Continue to guide and protect him. Yes, Lord. Lead them in the way that you want them to be. Yes, Lord. You say, train up the child in a way that when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. There were several testimonies today that said that they were trained up from the, from the beginning. Even though they dressed, but Lord, they came back. Yes, yes. Lord. And they knew that there was someone that they could leave their mind on. Yes. That emptiness, they felt it that even though they were thinking they were moving fine, but there's something was missing. It was missing. And that's something was your Holy Spirit. Yes. Lord. Thank God, Lord. Thank God, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Be with our Pastor, Heavenly Father, His wife. Yes, Continue to strengthen them. Yes, Continue to guide them. Lord, as you speak to your people through him, Lord, that someone left me change. Yes, someone who came hungry, Heavenly Father, without food. Yes, someone who got it this morning, this morning with pain, they would be able to be healed. Yes, we say, Lord, thank you, Heavenly Father. My wife just woke, woke up this morning with pain in her side. She couldn't come to church. But I know, Heavenly Father, I ask, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, you touch her. Yes, Lord. Take thank away that pain. Jesus. Oh, yes, Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. that you hear our prayers. Thank you. And not only hear me our prayers, but that you want to grant all our wishes. Yes, Lord. We say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. Lord, not our will. Mm -hmm. Let your will be done. In Jesus' yes. precious name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Hallelujah. be the name. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. When you listen to dynamic testimonies of what the Lord has done, it thrills me to see the power of the Holy Spirit working. You know, God the Father draws you and me. Jesus saves you and me. Yes. 
and it's the holy spirit who orchestrates everything else. all three working in unison it is the hand of the lord upon me even before i was born mm. before you were born and each time i look at the picture of solomon dr silvester's son it thrills me how <laughs> like and the way he tries to praise god and how the children are very very close to jesus they are very very close and they clap hands they imitate everything the parents teach them the grandparents do and they watch and uh, one thing brother told me was uh, each time they pick up the bible he wants to pick up the bible too <laughs> it's beautiful how god puts in their hearts at that age just to look to him they are always there looking to god mm-hmm. the bible says that god knew you and me even before the foundation of the world mm-hmm. even before the foundation of the world where was i where were you before the foundation of the world you and i were in the heart of god and god decreed god did the decree he decreed and he decided he foreknew and then he foreordained he foresaw in his infinite wisdom and intelligence that you and i would be here today yes that i would be born in a jungle 8000 feet of the sea level in india and he knew that and he knew that i would go against him go against him saying god is blind he makes people blind and it's for the blind people to believe in a blind god not me i am an a plus student from high school i want to be a medical doctor one day and i was doing all those medical courses so that i could become an eye doctor to help people with problems with eyes so i was trying to look at it from a medical standpoint how i would be used the rest of my life but god had other plans mm-hmm. he orchestrated in such a way that i would go to a meeting to learn the english language better and listen to a speaker from this part of the world sitting next to me was a blind man and i was telling him why do you believe in that blind god who has made you blind but he being a hindu telling me sir i have heard that christ opened blind eyes that's why i'm here for prayer you couldn't believe this he received christ and the lord opened his blind eyes and he opened my eyes at the same time hallelujah Amen. god knows everything he sees everything so each person god has a plan in such a way he orchestrates in such a way god draws everybody the father god he draws everybody jesus saved those whom god had already drawn through the work of the holy spirit of god because the conviction comes by the holy spirit that is why it's not of our souls mm-hmm. and it's him who did it that's why all glory and honor goes to god only Amen. so we were as we call theologically predestinated in the plan of god based on his foreknowledge infinite wisdom and understanding it was not that god was aware of what was going to do he wasn't aware of it he knew it big difference he created the universe christ is the one the creator of the universe and he spoke the world into existence god spoke and the here was the world was created that's why in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he spoke the word and the word of god's intelligence he spoke the word right into existence John puts it in the third scripture first John no in the gospel of John gospel according to John all things were made by him 
all things, all things were made by him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Amen. What does it mean? God made everything. The Greek counterpart, genomi, it says, everything came into being, coming into existence. In other words, originated. God caught everything to come into existence. But people are battling over this idea. I heard yesterday, you know, a statistic. I couldn't believe it. Or this morning, how about 53 percentage or 57 or 53 percentage of evangelical Christians believe that there is more than one way to go to God. Can you believe this? Yeah, no wonder it is all mixed up. In India, we believe there is more than one way because it's a Hindu country. So if we talk about Christ, they receive you as Lord and Savior. But they also go to the temple and pray. Because for them, there is more than one way. God came in different incarnation. Nirvana, they call it. God came in different incarnation to visit people. And Christ is one of them. Buddha is another one. And all these great people are there. So why exactly you have to say, Paul Lawrence, that Jesus is their way, their truth, and their life? And that question pervades us. Having talked to more than 3,000 people, almost every one of them that the Lord gave me the grace to speak to, they gave their heart to Jesus. There were, there were others, after 3,000, I don't count them. And that is the question they had. Is there any other way? Even most recently, a lady asked them, do I have to just pray to Jesus? Layla, I have been praying for her the funeral of someone who died the, in Johnston, that chapel was packed to capacity. And I spoke to them, imagine yourself, you are in that casket. Someday you are going to be there. The greatest question in the Old Testament is, are you prepared to meet God? I am prepared to meet God. I can put myself in the casket. I am ready to go to be with Jesus, to depart and to be with Christ. Until then, God has given you and me a mission. Amen. Whether you are in the program for one month or ten months or twenty years, God has his hands upon you. Amen. And the enemy cannot go against you because you are engraven in the palm of God's hands. Engraven in the palm of his hands. You know, I come from the land of the monkeys. I know how the little ones hold on to the mother underneath the, on the, on the chest. Then they are going from one one place to the other, jumping from one place to the other. Yes. And they have that grip called monkey grip. That's why they have a wrench called monkey wrench. <laughs> Men all know the monkey wrench. Have you got of that? That grip, God's grip. And they hold on to it. Then they try to fight away. They right away they release their bigger hands and grab the baby. And then put them, give them a little blessing, and then stay there. So we are engraven in the palm of his hands. That's why anything relating to you and me, the Lord is watching over us. Amen. The Lord is watching over us. Even you know, like two days ago, I bought a brand new leather glove. I wanted to use it very sparingly. And that happened to be the day I wanted to go and use the electric, electric saw outside on the back of my house just to trim the bushes, you know? It happened to be an apple tree. Suddenly it got caught. I couldn't believe that it was I it was cutting the spin finger. Suddenly I released myself. I thought it's half at least half a finger is gone. The glove, you know, so totally opened up and I opened it up. There was only a scratch. You know? Right away in here the apple tree I knelt down and I prayed to God. Lord, you are watching over me. So there are certain things beyond our control. You don't know. The devil is after you. Fine. He's never going to win. Because 1 John 3 talks about it. 
the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God destroyed his works. So when we speak for Christ and against the devil, he is after us. He is after us. Until the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation, we saw it. What a calamity the devil had caused all over the world through his two assistants, the false prophet and the world leader. Now the two were thrown into the bottomless, uh, no, thrown into the lake of fire. Now the strong angel comes down and grabs Satan and ties him up and throws him into the into the bottomless pit to be there for 1,000 years during which we will be there in the millennium after we have been raptured. But those who go through the tribulation, they are going to be there. I mean, we see that from the book of Revelation by being up in heaven with the Lord, we could see all the, all the atrocities going on in the world. Then Satan is released and then tries to gather everybody you could think of. Gog and Magog. Walks through the city of Jerusalem. Captures the city. Then there is a war between the saints of God and God himself. The final attack of Satan against God. Direct fight. Christ overcomes Satan. Where does he go? They throw him right into the lake of fire. And then later on, death is thrown in. And everything connected to hell, death, everything is thrown in. That is where the new eternal state starts. New heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. Everything is new. And that's what it means. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God had that in mind when you and I were in the heart of God pre to, uh, before the creation of the world. So he was not the he was not the consequence of the creation. Mm. Christ was not the consequence of creation. And he was the cause of the creation. What does that mean? He created everything. That's why he is called the creator of the universe. The world doesn't see that. They try to go against it in so many ways. Like when I used to follow the Darwin theory of evolution, man coming from a monkey, I could not believe that I came from a monkey. I said, probably I'm not the monkey, maybe man is a monkey. I'm not. I wrestled with it all my college years until I got saved. And I found out that I was made in the image of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You and I are made in the image of God. Amen. And the Greek word for that is icon, copy. You know, I used to do a great study years ago when I was at Bryan University working for my MBA. Xerox was my first company. I really loved it. I knew everything they were doing. And the first machine, Xerox copy, <laughs> came into existence in this country. And they were so proud of it. And they were able to beat the Japan and everybody else. You know. And I was so excited about this copying machine. Because I remember trying to make a copy of my transcript to come to this country for admission to college. I was admitted to, um, what is that uh, university? Uh, um, in uh, Pennsylvania, Penn State University, Princeton University. I was admitted. I had my hand in, I got my admission letter in my hand. You know. To send my transcript, I traveled 450 miles to make one copy of the transcript. So I knew the value of that copy. I had to save it so well and send it by registered mail so that they would get it. Thank God I got that admission, although God didn't allow me to go there. He sent me somewhere else. Praise God. God's ways are not our ways. Amen. He knows the way you and I have to take. 
And when we fall into the plan, God's plan, that God has already made from the foundation of the world, and when we fit into God's plan and do his will, yeah. everything works well. Yes. Because Christ himself fitted into God's plan. Yes. They all three were in agreement. Whatever the Father wanted to do, Jesus did. Whatever Jesus wanted to do, the Holy Spirit does. Unfortunately, his servants don't want to do God's will. Right. <laughs> That's why we get into trouble. When you go a little bit out of the way, you know, it causes trouble. And then somehow the Holy Spirit convicts us and we get back onto the main road. Praise the name of the Lord. So God, in his infinite wisdom and intelligence, he knew how to select you, how to have this pre-planning. So you and I were in the pre-planning of God. God decreed that. And then he decided, and he made a pre-planning yeah. that someday he would catch you and lead you to team challenge to come to Christ <laughs> or me to that gospel meeting. In so many ways, we have come to know Christ. Each one has a testimony. Amen. So God knew you even when you were in your mother's womb. Blessed be the name of God. Yeah. So when you think about the greatness of God, each time I listen to that song, how great the Lord, more than anybody else, more than Satan. He caused that enmity between God and you. So we were enemies. We were enemies of God. First Peter talks about it. We were at enmity. John talks about it. The entire Bible talks about it. We fell from the grace of God now, all because of what? Satan. Satan caused the trouble in, in the Garden of Eden through Eve. And that trouble keeps going on. God gave the commandments. We disobeyed the commandments. That's why we are at enmity with God. So Christ had to appear in the form of a human, a man, and he had to crucify our disobedience on the cross in the flesh. And that is the way he destroyed that enmity that you and I have against God. He crucified it. That is the necessity of his being born as a human being to die on the cross. There is no other way the Lord could meet that infinite demand, infinite demand. No one could meet the demand. You have to be 100% perfect to reach God. 100% holy to meet God. I have asked that question more than 5,000 times, including the man whose legs 33 million people have washed and drank, drank that water for salvation. Do you really believe that are you 100% holy? He said, no. After I asked him, do you catch cold if you are saying that you are still God? Sometimes I wonder you know, whether misleading these people. There are several yogis. There was a yogi conversion at that time in that area. But three of them, one by one, God saved them. I never knew. These people really, you know, they were <coughs> ascetics. They gave up everything to find God. Growing a long beard begging with a begging bowl, trying to find the infinite truth about God. Then at some point, the devil deceived them to believe that they are God. They themselves have reached that potential to be God. That is where that self-awareness, transcendental, transcendental meditation happened. By Maga, Magesh Yogi, Maga, Maga, Magesh Yogi. That was terrible. I used to practice that, you know, going into nothing. You know. But when you come to Christ, you see that He is our wisdom, He is our knowledge. You know. We reach God in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. When we turn to Christ by looking at the cross where Jesus died for you and for me, 
all of our answers are right there. Otherwise, the answer is not there. That's why you have to see God sees the way he sees things. Let's turn to the book of Colossians. The first chapter, 11 to 21. Colossians, first chapter, 11 to 21. It's a beautiful chapter because Paul was fighting against the church where a beautiful congregation had been working for Christ after Epaphras. Epaphras. God sent him. I don't know where he was converted, probably in one of Paul's crusades. And he went to this place, Colossae, and there he started this ministry, looks like a home ministry, where Philemon and others used to attend. It was one of the most beautiful churches in it. But for some reason, things began to shake up. What was happening was for 200 years, there was a group called the Gnostics. Have you heard of them? Gnosticism. India is a part of that. Still, we are Gnostics there. You believe that you can go to God through your thought. Buddhism, I used to be a Buddhist, being enlightened, enlightened in the mind. So this is what Paul was facing here at the church at Colossae. It was a beautiful town, once was a very prosperous town. And then later on, you know, it's a modern drinking. It was a nice trade route at that time. It had its greatest prominence at that time. Now, lots of testimonies were there, like beautiful testimonies like the Teen Challenge. God saved many, many people there. But now what is happening is on the one side, God is moving. And on the other side, the devil wants to work in this church. When the devil cannot work against you outside of the church, he can work against you inside the Teen Challenge, inside our Mount Pleasant congregation. That is the way the enemy works. You know. That is why Apostle Paul puts it in so many places. You know, Be aware of the devices of the enemy. Yes. He knows how to trap each person. Yes. Like most of you gave us excellent testimonies. You know. How he could trap you based on one little problem. You know. And you couldn't surrender it to Christ. You know. Went through every other program. And ultimately when he gave it to Jesus. And the Lord set you free and gave you like the book of Colossians talk about, he gave you a lively hope, a living hope. Yeah. Like Apostle puts it last Sunday, I preached on it. Praise be to the blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his mercy, yeah. what happened? It's according to his mercy, he regenerated us. He has made us born again in him. Yeah. The regeneration takes place on the inside by the Holy Spirit of God, according to the mercy of God. So this church was shaken by, by some of the Gnostics. They started believing Christ and other things. Christ and other things. They wanted to say that, well, I don't think so. Christ is not the only answer. Some of them wanted to go back to ritualism, doing all the rites. As per the law, they wanted to practice asceticism, kind of, a, in our day, we can call it a spiritual asceticism, like a Zoom, Zoom fellowship. They believed that matter is evil, only spirit is real. So Christ was the emanation in the spirit. Christ was only in the spirit. He was not in the human flesh. He was not flesh and blood. So Christ could not have died as a man because matter is evil. And they dedicated their bodies to all kinds of 
satanic evil pleasures because the body is evil and we have no control over it so splurge whatever you want to do drugs alcohol everything else they got other types of immorality idolatry all kinds of satanic appetites of the body they just gave in it they just gave in it so that kind of gnosticism that controlled the church controlled people of the church false teachings people thought and oh you can why is it that you are saved but still you are committing sins because it is not 100% that's the way they argued it and some people could not see that positionally we are saved you know, and progressively we are sanctified you know. potentially we will be there ultimately it's a progress Christ to save me when when he died on the cross not even when i knew him as my lord and savior i was accepted in the beloved you know, according to the book of ephesians you know. christ accepted me you know, in the beloved in christ you know. but i accepted his acceptance when i received christ as my lord and savior very simple and the holy spirit worked it out like in all of your lives now we have to grow in our walking with the lord and putting off the old man the old leaven being crucified on the cross and putting on the new life working with the resurrection power Amen. keep going on under the power of the holy spirit so the holy spirit when we surrender to the spirit of god he helps us to have all of our passions and the bodily appetites and everything of the devil that works against us through the flesh we modify our body by recognizing that i am dead to christ dead to sin but i am alive in christ because i'm seated in the heavenly places Christ has not only redeemed me but he has put another thinking i am sitting in heavenly places yeah. seated with christ so all these attacks of the enemy they come and go keep going like a best swimmer keep pushing keep pushing and pushing and that is our walk by faith led by the spirit of god against all the devices of the enemy So let us read some of the scripture, and that's all I have here for today. Colossians 11 to 21, first chapter, 11 to 21. So Paul, as usual, is giving all the explanation, thanks, and so on. So here he says, "We have received the knowledge of God. We have received Christ as Lord and Savior, but strengthened with all might, empowered." Christ not only makes you it is an empowerment that we receive with the glorious power of Christ strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light Amen. see we have been reconciled to God First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, fifth chapter. We have made new creations. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself. So Christ has reconciled you and me already. By because of that, we have put on His righteousness, and we are thereby qualified. I am qualified to stand before God, because when Christ has said it is finished. the huge the huge the whole inner place in the temple was opened up and until then only the high priest could go once in a year taking the offering of the blood blood sacrifice for himself and for the nation of israel but christ did it not only for you and for the whole world so that we could go to the altar to the holiest of holies there is no prevention no wall nothing there we are free 
That is why we are the partakers, not only of salvation, we have an inheritance now. What is it? We are the heir of Jesus to be in heaven. And in the 1,000 years, the millennium time to be with Christ and for eternity to come. That is the inheritance we have. And the devil has no power over him. And I'm going to let him. I'm not going to let him. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. I want everybody to say that he has delivered me from the power of darkness. Can you he say has it? He has me delivered from me from the power of darkness. of darkness. And conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. The, new king, the King James puts this differently. He has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So where are you now? You are in the kingdom of light. Amen. You, are, you were in the kingdom of darkness once. Mm -hmm. Now you are not in the kingdom of darkness, but you are in the kingdom of light. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Blessed be his name. Amen. He has delivered us, translated us, whatever the way you can take it. No more darkness. In whom we have redemption through the blood. That's why Christ has to pay the price, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, you know. And he is the image of the invisible God. He was God in the human form. He's the copy, perfect copy. <laughs> Only you can identify your picture, right? Some people can identify, but you cannot say that that's not me. I can see myself. I saw the other day my brother sent a picture of me and him. My uncle bought a nice <coughs> wedding ring, not a wedding ring, but it's a ring called. Some kind of a ring, it's a gold ring on his marriage. So we traveled 500 miles, my mom and my sister wasn't born at that time. All three brothers, we all went there. And I remember the ring. I still remember that. Can you believe that? Four or five years, I had that ring. I saw your son with that ring too. It's amazing how we can remember certain things. I always liked it. And later on, my dad had to sell it because he needed money to pay all the bills. He got into some suitcase, a lot of problem with the, with the family. I was thinking about it when I was reading about Philip, the prince, you know, the duke, 99 years old, and he died. You know. And he was married in 1947 in November. And the queen was young at that time. You know. And uh, my family was connected to the royalty. They wouldn't even recognize me you know, if I say that. You know. My brother sent me a picture of a store, it's called King George Stores. And my dad started the store, he was a design tailor, design tailor. So he used to stitch clothes, he would always say, Her Majesty. And the prince left a suit for my dad, suit jacket. In a hurry they had to leave when independence took over India. Mahatma Gandhi declared independence from Great Britain. So the prince told my dad, you are my favorite tailor. Wear this in memory of me. My dad never wanted to touch it. I always used to see him. I would say, what is the name of the queen, dad? Her majesty. Because they wouldn't say the name of the queen. To that extent, you know. Now, I can't go to Buckingham Palace. Although I had all this, I can show all this. Right? I can't go in. But I can go to the other palace and wait there. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So compare that in that angle. Mm -hmm. So we are accepted in the beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jonah can go today. I can go. Anybody can go. Yes. Blessed be the name. Amen. So you have to look at it. Lord, you have made it possible for me. I am a child of the King. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I may not be accepted by the world. I may not be walking in the red carpet you know, in, with the best actors or actresses in Hollywood. It doesn't matter to me. 
all these, like Paul said, and everything is great, but not for me. I consider it like garbage. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything ultimately goes down to the dust. You know? It's great to be the best athlete, best this, best that. Great. But the greatness is to be with Christ. Amen. That is the greatest <coughs> aspiration you and I can have. What good it is to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Absolutely nothing. Boy, that scripture killed me until I fell on my knees and I opened my heart to Jesus. The truth will set you free. And it did set me free. And, the, and I was cheated by the Jehovah Witnesses. I, I saw a book outside. And I was taking an evening walk. Oh God, why don't you reveal yourself to me? What is your name? Are you Buddha or are you Muhammad? Are you Krishna? Are you Jesus? Who the heck are you? I want to know you. Can you put at least a piece of paper on the road? Yeah. I want to follow you. Then I saw the book way down there in a second hand book sellers, old book roadside stalls. And the book was titled The Truth Shall Set You Free. Yeah. The scripture actually cap captured me. But it was written by J.F. Rutherford, the Jehovah Witness leader. They were called Russellites. Russell and Jehovah Witness leader, one of them. I read the book inside out. Two times, three times, four times. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because that Christ was not God. He was crying out to God. Two weeks ago, I spoke at the North Situate Baptist Church. That was the scripture I took it. Christ was quoting the scripture now. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabakhtana. Quoting, you know, written in that uh, Aramaic, the Greek goes differently. Why have you abandoned me? Christ had to be abandoned so that we could be included in the kingdom of God. The weight of sin of the whole world was upon him. That is why the power of the cross, the redemption. You have to look at redemption in many, many ways. The best way is Jesus had to be abandoned totally. He became our sin. He who knew no sin became our sin so that we could be without sin. That we could be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the redemption through his blood is the most powerful word you could think of. The forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. That's why he being the image of God has made you and I to be his image. For by him all things were created. So he created all things. He was not the consequence of creation. God did not create him. He created everything. There are in heaven and there are on earth. So everything Jesus created in heaven and the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Mm -hmm. You and I were created for God, That's right. not for myself. That's right. I lost my identity That's right. when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live in but it's not I who lives, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I wrote an eight page uh, or eight page thesis when I was in Bible college about the topic crucified with Christ. I preached everywhere, people fell asleep. <laughs> the hard words, yes. hard words. Then I wanted to make it simple. I thought this is America. Everybody should know the scriptures. This is a Christian country. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that. Couldn't believe it. I said, Lord, what is wrong with these people? And I had a master's degree in English language and literature, so I used to have all the high-sounding words. Then I got rid of all of them wanted to make it simple so that someone who can listen to me can understand it. 
simple Jesus died for you. How hard it is to say that. Jesus loves you. And one day we are going to stand before him. And I was talking to one of our wonderful friends here, Chuck the Barber. My friend knows here, Steve. And we ran into him at the Dunkin' Donuts the other day. Bill was here and he went for a cup of coffee. Hey, Paul, I haven't seen you, Pastor, for a long time. Like, yeah. But we are going on in God. Then I introduced Bill to him. Look at how God saved him. The truck fell over him. He was underneath. And Jesus saved him and he's alive today. Yeah. You got to listen to his testimony. He said, bring him over there to my salon. So we prayed and we went there. And Bill and I opened a scripture to him. He stayed there for a long time. It was the first time I prayed with Chuck in the barber shop. No customers were there. I told him maybe this, this may be your time. Open your heart to Jesus. I don't know whether he did that or not. He talked about Ray Fossey. He's in heaven today. And he is the one who shouted at me in the other Dunkin' Donut at the Smith Street. In the name of Virgin Mary, I curse you. I said, by the blood of the Lamb, I stop it. Oh, the blood of Jesus. He got right at him. <laughs> it went on in a half an hour. Have you ever been in a Dunkin' Donut? You will see a scene like that. I was there just to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> In the name of Virgin Mary, I curse you. But me, by the blood of Jesus, I want to give you peace. His peace. I release the peace of God upon you. Later, he gave his heart to Christ. Steve took me to the notorious place where he was. And we gave the gospel. And then he received Christ. And Steve showed a scripture. You've got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And he did it. All right, let's go to the next one. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things. And in him all things consist which means he holds everything together. And he's the head of the body, the church. Who is the head of the body? Jesus. The church. Jesus is the head of the body. So no one can say, this is the Baptist church. You have to come to church to be saved. This is a Baptist building. Every church building is a church building. And we belong to Christ. This is a cosmic church we belong to. His body. <laughs> Whom do you belong to? I belong to Jesus. I belong to his church. Of course, we need to have a place to worship. The early church, they, that's what they said. Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. They met wherever they could meet. In the marketplace. And this church met in a home. The home of Philemon. The runaway servant. Onesimus. He ran into trouble, was caught by the police, was in the same prison where Paul was. And he gave him the gospel and the servant was healed, saved, delivered. So Paul wrote an epistle in Philemon and sent it through Tychicus to go and give it to the home church in Colossae to Philemon directly. And he wrote this epistle to handle this problem in this church, you know, Gnosticism. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. That is, in him, in all things, he may have the preeminence. What does it mean, preeminence? Christ should be number one. Christ is number one. Before the church, team challenge, anything, you know. Jesus saved me. Amen. I love him. God is love. He came into my heart. He used the three theme challenge to help you. He used the gospel crusade to catch me. Praise God for the wonderful man of God. 
the firstborn from the dead. What does it mean, firstborn from the dead? It means he has the highest ranking, highest ranking in all. The idea is preeminence. In the Jewish culture, the firstborn has all the right, all the right, or two thirds of the property would go to him. He had much more right than all the rest of the children. So here, Christ became the firstborn in the sense, the highest ranking, top. In other words, there is nobody above him. And we are behind him. That's what it means. And he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may preeminence. Praise the Lord. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. By him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Excuse me. Peace through the blood of his cross. We read the entire book of Romans, that's where we're justified by the blood, justified by faith, and justified by grace. That's where the word justified by the blood you know, occurs very powerfully there. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled you know, what? in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. And another important scripture, I would like to give it. This scripture is very important. To, if, uh, later on you can look up for the Ephesians 2, 15 and 16. You can make a note of it. And uh, we, uh, we just read that scripture. Two nine, you can read later on. I can read it. The next chapter. That's why it's easy. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. That is an excellent scripture to speak to the Jehovah Witness. Christ was God in the human form. He's the one of the triune triune God. Godhead in Him bodily. In other words, he was both God, he lived in the eternity past, and he is alive today. He was there as a human at that time. He was a man. So in him does dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 100% God, 100% man. He had to be 100% man to die for you and for me. So that is the Godhead that Paul was able to see now. Again, if you turn to John 1, 3, all things were made by him and without him was not made, was not made anything that was made. So the Greek word for that is human uh, genoma, genomi. God made everything. God made you. God made me. Blessed be his name. Amen. So we are made. Christ had to become 100% human so that your sin and my sins 100% were put on the cross. So when he asked who is Christ, he became as the image of God. That's why he could say, he who has seen me has seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Why they picked up the rocks to kill him. They couldn't handle that. So if you want to know the Greek word for four new, you know, God four new, he knew ahead of time, you know, pro egano. That's where the word comes, prognosis. Prognostic. Pro prognostic. And then the other word, predestinated. That's the same word, you know. Progison. 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 So when you say prognosis, God had that prognosis of you. When? Long time ago. The doctor tells you, you have this, you have that. So Jesus, our greatest doctor, the doctor of salvation, healing, and deliverance, mm -hmm. he had the prognosis of you. And he wrote the prescription for your salvation. Amen. Jesus wrote the prescription that he would die for you and for me on the cross. 
that you would be all delivered from all the drugs and alcohol, cocaine and all the rest of it. Blessed be his name. Amen. That's why we say with God, all things are possible in it. Nothing is impossible for God. In it. And he has not given, you know, I have ministered to many, many patients too, you know. Right in the mental hospitals, and I can go on and and um, it is, if you don't believe with God, all things are possible. It is impossible to witness and all. We can pre speak only inside the church. But God has called us to take the church where? Outside the church and tell people. And here I was sitting in a, in a mental hospital to witness to somebody who didn't want to see a man. Can you believe this? A lady. She didn't want to see a man. And the lady who took me, Paul, you have a good candidate to speak to. Let me see how God can use you. Mm. Wow, what a drama. Lord, can he give me somebody better than this? She didn't want to come. Eventually, 100 people are so in that room. They had about 10, 20 televisions. They all turned the televisions on. Every one of them. At the loudest noise you could endure. I couldn't take it. So I had to sit like a Muslim, you know, with my hand like this. I had to close my ears so that I couldn't hear it. I prayed, speaking in the Holy Spirit. Satan, you cannot do anything against me here. I come against you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb. Because they overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, God sent me here. I'm going to be here for this lady to be set free. I knelt down and I prayed. Then all of them turned off the television. And everybody left the room. And the lady came and I led her to Jesus. Two months later, they released her from the hospital. She couldn't remember a thing. But she typed about 20,000 scriptures in because she used to be a stenographer, typist. And she showed me all those scriptures she typed. And her memory started coming back. God's word can change your memory. Everything. That's why to the poor the gospel is preached. Because they believe. People may say you don't know the Bible. Yes. I know the author of the Bible. I know the one who inspired the word, Amen. who spoke the word, and I know him. Amen. I realized that when I was walking with the poet, when I was studying, no, when I was working at Bryan University, my friend, you know, Tom, he wrote some anthology of poems. And I knew what he was thinking, you know, because we used to discuss a lot of those poetically, everything about life, you know, problems, and this and that. You know. So when he gave me his anthology of poems, since I know him, I know what he wrote. After reading a couple of poems, I know what he's thinking. There is no answer for what he was thinking about. I told him, Jesus is the answer. In the same way, when you know his word, you know the heart of God, you know the mind of God. The Greek thought, you can reach God only through intellect, through thought. That's why the Gnosticism took over the church, are taking over gradually. The early church fought against it. You got to worship the angels to go to God. That is why all this, you know, theories of worshiping, all the angels came in. All the saints were worshipped. Saint Jude, Saint Anthony, Saint this, and so on. So when my grandmother took me to Saint Anthony's church, it was a candle burning day. I used to like the candle. And then to the Hindu temple, coconut breaking day, you know, break the coconuts. Why? Because Christ is not enough for them. Once when you know Jesus, he is the only one. And he's more than anyone else you could think of. Amen. The largest person in intellect, the greatest, the very best. He is the wisdom of, he is the incarnate, he is the embodiment of wisdom. Every wisdom is in him embodiment of wisdom, the embodiment of all power, all knowledge. 
and he is with you and he's in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what Paul talks about, Peter talks about. He, he is, according to his mercy, you are reborn to have the lively hope, living hope. So the living hope is where? It is in our heart, in our head. So the head is not going to dictate anything. It is the spirit of God who, who is going to dictate my heart. And I'm going to put off all the old leaven, the appetite that the, Colossi, the church at Colossae was fighting against it because of this Gnosticism. And Paul is attacking everything that is in a nicer way. Christ is enough for you. He is everything for you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. You are everything, O God. Lord, help us, each one of us, to give you the preeminence. You died in our place, O God, to meet all the demands that no one can meet, O God. The holiest of holies came in the form of a human being to die on the cross, submitted yourself to the Father who sent you, O God, so that you could fulfill the will that no one can fulfill, O God. And we have been gifted to know the mystery, Lord. The mystery that Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you for revealing yourself to us, redeeming us. Yes. Lord, we thank you that we are seated with you in heavenly places. Yes. Thank you for everything you are doing here, O oh God. Yes. If any one of you watching this program on Facebook or YouTube, open your heart to Jesus. Christ is all you need. He is the only one who is 100% holy. And when he was on the earth, 100% holy yes. to die for you on the cross so that you could be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. No one else can do for you. Thank you, Lord, you died for me. I am a sinner. I surrender my life to you. I recommit my life to you. If what you have done before, still oscillating. Christ and this and Christ and that. You don't need that. Christ is all sufficient. He is the only one who you need. He paid your payment in full on the cross. He paid a debt you owed, but he couldn't pay. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. I needed someone who washed my sins away. Now God wants to give me a new song. I'm a new creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Yes, Lord. Thank you. That you have established us on a rock, O oh God, to stay. Yes, Lord. You Thank are our you. rock. We are established on that rock, O oh God. Our testimony is built on you. Lord, no matter what the wind, weather, whatever the oscillation happens to be, we are built on the rock, O oh God. And you are the rock. We thank you. We thank you and surrender to you. Yes, In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, today, thank you, Lord. Uh,